Hey, True Feather, make sure those bundles are secure. As a souvenir of our visit, our companion Elswa, a famous woodcarver of the Haida tribe, offers you this totem pole. Elswa is right here. He wants his totem pole to be the symbol of our friendship and of our faith in the Great Spirit. We will treasure this gift as we will treasure your visit, Pocahontas. Here is the basket you requested, Great Chief. I hope you like our gift, that it will help you on your journey. The basket contains 300 plants to help heal the sick. Oh, oh, oh. Except for diseases sent by the Great Spirit. We offer you our heartfelt thanks for this precious gift, Great Chief. In the name of our group, I thank you for your hospitality. You must leave without delay. The weather's getting worse. The Sioux people who live beyond the mountains are expecting you. Thank you for visiting us, Pocahontas, and may the Great Spirit protect you wherever you go. Danger signal. Maybe the weather's getting worse. We better find shelter. Oh, and quickly, too. Look over there. The sacred animals have found a cave for us. Once we're in there, it can snow as much as it likes. If this snow keeps up, there's no telling how long we'll have to stay in here. Oh, let's hope the weather gets better when the sun comes up. May the Great Spirit hear you and order the elements to calm down. Look, the sun's out. It's so beautiful. <laughs> further to the pass. We'll probably be there tomorrow morning. With luck, we'll reach the meeting place in about 10 days. Yell, are you okay? Did you get hurt? It's gonna take time for you to get used to riding a horse. Yes, for Eskimos, a horse is like riding a dolphin. <laughs> You'll get used to it. Huh? The Eagle's warning us there's another storm up ahead. We'd better find shelter as soon as possible. Oh! for the gathering if we keep getting caught in storms every day. Our horses will help us make up for all the time we lose. Sure, but even the horses aren't much help in a snowstorm. Look, let's stop being pessimistic. That's not gonna solve anything. Muck is right. After all, we're traveling to spread the word of our protector, the Great Spirit. Uh, how about if I tell a story to take our minds off the weather for a while, huh? Good idea, Red Owl. We're listening. It's a story I heard told by a Sioux from the Lakota tribe. Actually, I met him while I was traveling across the Great Plains to take part in the summer bison hunt. This is how he told it. As a sign of our respect, we will listen in our human form. Thank you, I'm flattered. <clears throat> a long, long time ago, 
So long ago that no one knows when it happened, the seven sacred fires of the Dakota Nation's tribal council were set up in front of the teepees on a vast plain. The sun baked the plain and the heat was unbearable. It became hard to find food. Provisions ran out. There was no game to be hunted in all the region, and often the hunters returned to camp empty-handed. <laughs> Among the gathered tribes were the Itazipchos and the Bolas under the leadership of their chief, Empty Horn. One day the chief appointed two young men to go hunting for fowl. They searched far and wide, but to no avail, until they came upon a hill which they decided to climb to better see the lay of the land. That's where, far away, they noticed a tiny, unrecognizable figure that seemed to float above the ground, coming closer and closer. They knew it had to be a waka, a sacred incarnation. As the wakan came closer, they saw she was a very beautiful woman with long black hair flowing over her shoulders. She wore a white doe-skin dress and carried a package and a fan made of sage leaves. The two braves stared at her in awe because they realized that standing before them was Petsan Wee, the white bison woman. Oh. Oh. I come to you bearing a message from all the bison people. Oh. Go back to your camp and tell your friends to prepare for my arrival. Tell the chief to erect the sacred tent with 24 poles. There I will bring my magic. Great chief, we've just seen Pet San Wee. Oh. She asked you to prepare the sacred tent. Go spread the word in the village. Right away, great chief. Listen, listen, everybody. A sacred incarnation is going to visit our village. Get ready. We must prepare a great welcome. They waited four days and four nights. Then, as the sun came up, they saw the bison woman approaching. Welcome among us, Petsamwee. We were expecting you. Inside the tent, the Wakan walked in a circle, following the direction of the sun's rays. Sister Wakan, we are overjoyed you have come to speak to us. The bison woman asked them to make an Awanka Waka, an altar made of red earth. On the altar was placed a bison skull and a tripod, on which to put her sacred objects. She opened the package and took out the Shanun, or sacred pipe. She raised the pipe high to show it to everyone. Then she filled it with shanshasha, willow bark tobacco and dried bison droppings. And then she smoked it, just like we do, from generation to generation because the smoke from the bowl represents the Great Spirit's breath. With this sacred pipe, you can walk the land of your ancestors courageously with your heads held high. When you point the pipe towards the heavens, your body will become the living medium between the celestial mysteries and earthly realities. Wankantanka smiles on you, because now we are as one. The earth, men, animals, trees and fields. As for the women, their work is equally important, and the pipe is a sign that men and women will come together in a circle of love. The man will build a hearth, and the woman will decorate it, and both will be joined in marriage. Then the bison woman gave them corn, pemmican, and roots. She taught them how to make fire, and how to cook by filling a bison's belly with water, and dropping a red hot stone in. Then she took her leave with some last words of wisdom. This pipe is a red beam, which will point out a red life and a red path to you. You will use it to conduct all your ceremonies and to talk to Wankan Tanka, the mysterious Great Spirit. The four cycles of creation are within me, and at every new cycle, I will visit you. I think we're at the end of a cycle right now. Yes. That's why the Bison Woman has returned. Then what? What happened next? The Wakan headed away into the distance. Suddenly, she became a black bison. Then she changed into a brown bison. Then a red bison. And then she transformed into a white female bison, which is a sacred creature. As soon as she disappeared, a great herd of bison charged toward Empty Horn and his tribe. 
From that day on, the bison became the livelihood of numerous tribes, supplying them with food, clothing, and tools. And today, thanks to the bison, they have a comfortable life. It's a wonderful story, Red Owl, and you told it with such great feeling. Tomorrow, we'll be in bison country. The journey will be long. You should rest. Yes. What tribes have their home in the land of the bison? Well, all the Sioux live there for a start. That's why we're going there. And let's hope the Sioux tribes will give us a warm welcome. Whoever doesn't like snow is in big trouble. <laughs> Where are you going, my friends? We're going hunting, Mock. Hey, that sounds like a great idea. Do you mind if we come with you? No, you're welcome to join us. Come on. We'll both come. True Feather will be our guide. What happened to Pocahontas and the others? <laughs> Pocahontas and Hapiho are praying in the teepee, giving thanks to the Great Spirit. Well, let's hope we catch a rabbit at least. Appaloosa. Hey, it's Pocahontas' horse. What's he doing here? If you ask me, he's trying to tell us something. Something must have happened to Pocahontas. Come on, let's go see. Let's go. have been covered by snow. Pocahontas! Oh, no! What's the matter? Oh, do 
you feel any better now? She regained consciousness thanks to those medicinal plants. Yes. Tell us about the avalanche, Pocahontas. How did it happen? I have the feeling we're being followed by the evil spirit. I don't understand why the sacred animals didn't warn us. could not help because someone has established a barrier between us. We couldn't read your thoughts anymore. <sighs> yes. Be careful. You have powerful enemies, and they'll try to attack you again. Trappers have already explored this region. They named that peak over there Little Bighorn. What's the matter? Please leave me here alone for a little while. Huh? What did you say? You want to stay here? By yourself? It's far too dangerous. Be careful, Pocahontas. You know our mysterious enemy is always there waiting to strike. Don't worry about me. I'll be fine. A mysterious voice is calling me. No, wait! Pocahontas! Don't follow me, my friends. The mysterious voice told me not to bring anyone with me. to the death! One day this place will have historic importance. It will be the site of our people's greatest victory over the pale face invaders, but it will prove to be a useless victory that will only bring misfortune.
disappeared. It's incredible. I don't understand. They must have been evil spirits to disappear like that. Well, there's no doubt we're up against powerful enemies. The trouble is they're more powerful than you could ever imagine. What are you saying? Huh, Hopi Ho? What do you know that we don't? 